multiples. Now life is always easier when we can use examples to help explain things, so let's use the number 10 to give us some definitions. Multiples of 10 are the numbers in the 10 times table, so 10, 20, 30 and so on. Factors. The factors of 10 are the numbers that can divide into 10. So for example, 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. 1 and 10 multiply to get 10, and so do 2 and 5. This is why these numbers are the factors of 10. Primes. Prime numbers are the numbers which have only two factors. These factors are 1 and the number itself. Some examples of prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11 and 13. Note that 2 is the only even prime number. Now we've got the definitions out of the way, let's move on to the topic of expressing numbers as a product of its prime factors. Don't be put off, this is just the technical way to say that we need to use factor trees. And because examples make explaining things easier, let's take the number 72. We must split up 72 until we're left with a group of prime factors, so we begin by simply dividing by 2 to get the factors 36 and 2, which we write as shown. And we've already found a prime, which we can underline because we'll need it later. Doing the same with 36 now, because that isn't a prime number yet, so we can split that up into 2 and 18 we found another prime which we can underline because we'll need it later. Doing the same with 18 because that isn't a prime number yet. So we can split that up into 2 and 9. And we found another prime which we can underline because we'll need it later. And now we have 9 which still isn't a prime so let's split this one up. 2 and... wait, that won't give us a whole number. So we'll have to try a higher number. 3 will work. So that's 3 and 3 which are both primes and factors of 9 which we can underline and which complete our tree. Now we can use those prime factors which we've been collecting along the way and write them out like this. You could write 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 because that is what's there but it's quite a long way of writing it out and in maths it's useful to write things out in the shortest way possible. Now there are three 2's in this factor tree so we can write 2 to the power of 3 to let us know how many 2's we have. We can also do the same to the number 3, of which there are two numbers, so it would be 3 to the power of 2. That was a lot of information to process. If this method still seems a bit hazy in your knowledge, try rewinding back to the beginning of this section and feel free to watch it as many times as you like until it makes more sense. Time for a few more definitions. Firstly, there's the highest common factor, which can also be written as HCF. This is the highest factor that is common to a group of numbers. Then there's the lowest common multiple, also written as LCM. This is the lowest multiple that is common to a group of numbers. But examples make explaining things easier, so let's take a look at some. Find the HCF of 40 and 100. Let's start by writing out the factors of 40 first. 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 20, 40. Then do the same for 100. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, 50, 100. The highest number that is common in both cases is 20. Therefore, the HCF must be 20. We got the right answer, but that was quite a long method. Anyway, let's use the same numbers and find their LCM. First, let's write out some multiples of 40. 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240. And then the same for 100. 100, 200, 300, 400. The lowest number that is common in both cases is... ...200. Therefore, the LCM is 200. But that was still a really long method. 
Hmm, how about we try using a factor tree to find the HCF 40 and 100 instead? We must split up the 40 into its prime factors first, using the same method as before, until we're left with an answer written out as shown. Then, the same method again with 100, until we get an answer written out as shown. We find the HCF by looking at the two answers and finding the highest value that is present in both cases. If we look at 2 first, the value which we would take is the 2 to the power of 2. Then, out of the two values for 5, we would take the 5. Let's take a step back and try to understand why by using an analogy. Take a handful of sweets and a packet of sweets, for example, because, as we know, examples makes explaining things a lot easier. It is possible for sweets to be put into a packet. That works. However, it isn't possible for a packet of sweets to be put into one individual sweet, although many of us may wish it was. How is this relevant to our example? Well, let's say that the individual sweets are the same as our 2 to the power of 2, or our 5, and that 2 to the power of 3 and the 5 to the power of 2 are the same as packets of sweets. 2 to the power of 2 can, therefore, go into 2 to the power of 3, just as 5 can go into 5 to the power of 2. However, 2 to the power of 3 cannot go into 2 to the power of 2, and 5 to the power of 2 cannot go into 5. Just like the packets of sweets, they are too big. This is why we can only use 2 to the power of 2 and 5 to give us our answers for the HCF. Back to the example, if we multiply 2 to the power of 2 and 5 together, we get 20. Aha! The same answer as before. Now, let's try with the LCM this time. First, we can zoom through the factor tree part as it was the same as before, and it's the answers which we need to use to find the LCM. All we need to do for the LCM is compare the values, so 2 to the power of 3 and 2 to the power of 2, and use the biggest one, which would be 2 to the power of 3. Then, the same for the other two values. Lastly, multiply these numbers together to give you the LCM, which is, as you probably would have expected, 200. Complete! If you like this video, please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching!